Hey everyone, uh, Patty here. I am the blogger vlogger for the Turks and Chaos. Um, okay, so today I just wanted to go over my early pregnancy symptoms that I had in the very beginning, the first like couple weeks of knowing that I was pregnant and um, yeah, share with you guys what I'm going through. Um, and then afterwards, I will talk about, what's I going to talk about? Oh, okay. I'm having mom brain already, obviously. Um, and this happens to me a lot. I will be like stuck on stupid in the kitchen, standing there, trying to remember what I was going to do. Like it took me about 10 minutes before I remembered I needed to go in the fridge and grab something that I wanted to grab. Um, <laughs> this is just now happening though. I'm almost nine weeks and that's, it took me this long before that started happening. So yes. So I'll go over the pregnancy symptoms first, the early symptoms first, and then I will let you know how I'm handling my morning sickness because it's the worst it's ever been out of all of my pregnancies. And this is my fourth pregnancy. So I'll let you know what I'm doing, what's helping and how to get through it a little bit more gracefully. All right, so in the beginning, I was peeing a lot. Like I would wake up at night and I would have to pee like four times in the middle of the night, like as if I were chugging water all night long in my sleep. That was before I knew. I was like, dang, am I getting like a bladder infection or something? Am I drinking too much water before bed? Like, and my bladder is just too full. Like, what is going on? It was really annoying and I was pretty tired because I was waking up so much in the middle of the night to go pee. And so that kind of stunk. The next thing that happened was, I guess, the missed period, which happened, oh, you know, the week before I missed my period, I was kind of peeing more, so. My body was kind of changing a little bit already, obviously, adjusting to hormones with the pee, the increased urination. And then my period date came and passed. And so I guess three days after my missed period, I decided I had a test in the closet. I was like, what the heck? I'll just take the test. I'm late. Might as well see because then I'll know that I'm not pregnant and then I can just tell myself that I'm stressed out because we just moved and I've been stressed. So I took the test and what do you know, it's positive. And then I took another test because my son didn't believe me and I had already thrown away the other one. So I had to tell him, I mean, I had to take another one. So that's multiple positive tests. Okay, pretty sure I'm pregnant. After that, I can't say I had too much, too many more symptoms initially. I was getting a little bit more tired, feeling a little bit fatigued, but other than that, uh, not much. So I guess it was right at four weeks, four weeks, uh, like four days, four weeks and four days I found out I was pregnant. Um, and that was the first sign. Um, my boobs were a little sore, but I always typically get sore boobs, um, during my periods. So that wasn't like an initial, oh no, that was kind of like, okay, well, they're always sore. But this soreness, it was weird because it, like my boobs just felt fuller. Like they typically look a little bit fuller, but they like, I don't know how to explain it. They were like swollen. They look kind of swollen. So typically they might just feel a little bit. They look a little bit like rounded out. Um, but this time they looked like puffy, like my nipples looked a little bit puffy and my boobs just in general were like bigger. And I was like, that's weird. Um, so that's another sign. So sore boobs, peeing more, missed test, um, and a little bit of fatigue. Those were the main ones. Okay, jump to week seven. No, 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 let's do week six. Okay, so two weeks after I find out I'm pregnant. My smellers get 
insanely enhanced, okay? I have such crazy sniffing power. I just smell everything. I walk into the room and I start picking up smells and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? Like smells that typically would be like, it kind of smells. No, it's like, oh my gosh, what is that smell? But it's nothing smellier than average what I'm used to, but I cannot stand smells now. And so the enhanced smell came first and then later on in like by the end of week seven, I was full on smell aversions. Like I could not stand to be around it. Dog food, like wet dog food, wet cat food, um, like food that I left in the kitchen overnight. Like maybe I didn't clean a pan by the morning time. That would be the only thing I could smell on the whole downstairs. And it would just be nauseating to me like gross, gross, gross. I don't want to smell the food. I don't want to smell oh, anything that I would normally be okay with. I was like not okay with. I had to unclog a toilet, okay? Which I have three boys and I do it a lot because they're all potty trained However, they're not toilet paper trained, so they tend to over, over, wipe, 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 use too much toilet paper and clog the toilet. So I went in there to unclog the toilet like I am used to doing, part of the job, and I just started gagging. And I don't typically gag at things like that because I'm used to it, but no, this time I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal because the smell my scent, my sense of smell is so enhanced that it just hits me five times harder. And then I, I can't, I can't do it. There's no way. There's no way I can just like hold my breath and do it. I smell it anyways. Um, so that has been something that's actually kind of different. Um, I remember in one of my pregnancies saying, Hey, why do, why does my sense of smell get better when I'm pregnant? But this time it's like, Oh my gosh, why do I smell that? I don't want to smell that. I'm not typically one for air fresheners, but I'm like, man, my house needs an air freshener. I don't want to smell all these smells. I would rather smell something pleasant. So yeah. And then by week uh, eight, I'll say, um, uh, maybe this happened about in the seventh week too. I started getting nauseous. So the smells would make me gag and then sometimes throw up. Um, by the beginning of the eighth week, I was full on like nauseous all the time. In the morning, I would wake up, so, or I'm like there now. I wake up so hungry that, oh my gosh, I can't eat because I'm so nauseous from feeling so hungry. And then it's hard to eat and that nauseous feeling just sticks around and sticks around and sticks around and sticks around until I'm able to put something in my stomach that'll help calm it a little bit. Um, so this is why women, you see women, they always have their saltine crackers because it's something bland that isn't gonna trigger like some sort of like aversion, but it's also kind of gentle. It's just something that can soak up the stomach acids and put a little bit something in your stomach so you're you're not feeling nauseous. Um, yeah, but the nausea for me was crazy. Um, and it, I had, I was having trouble eating and it was making me feel even more sick, so. Finally, the other day, my husband went out and bought these, um, what are they called? Psy bands, PSI, Psy bands. Um, they're motion sickness bands, so they just have the acupressure point here that goes on the wrist. And, oh my gosh, as soon as I put these on, I don't know if it was the placebo effect, but within a few minutes, I was already like, well, I'm hungry, and I'm still a little bit nauseous, but I'm not like keeled over, I can't eat anything nauseous. I feel like I'm nauseous, I need to eat, I can eat. It's like, I'm still nauseous, but they take the edge off, if that makes sense, to the point where I can still function a little bit. Um, and I just, I take them off at night, because at night I'm usually okay after I have dinner. I've had enough food during the day. Um, 
at the beginning of the day, I can't eat too much. It has to be very small, like a couple graham crackers here, a half a bagel here, um, just little tiny things. And then by lunchtime, I'm usually very hungry and need to eat, 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 eat. But again, I can only eat like small meals at a time because I do get full quite quickly or I, you know, I've, I can't overfill my stomach or it feels sick again. So it's just like the balance of just the right amount of food. So I find myself eating little meals from lunch to dinner. And then by dinner time, that's when I have like my biggest meal of the day, but it's still kind of small. And I recommend eating like closer to bedtime. Otherwise, I've, I don't know about you, but I've been waking up at night. Um, so like it'll all my hunger pains will wake me up in the middle of the night and I'll have to go downstairs and eat something or I won't be able to fall back asleep or my stomach will hurt so bad that I'll have to just put something in it so that I can fall back asleep um so I've been having to eat later at night which I know if you have heartburn that stinks but um right now I don't have heartburn and I know I could risk getting heartburn but right now it's not worth it to me to feel hungry at night like that. It stinks, it stinks, it stinks. In the morning, you need to have something by your bed, like your crackers or chips, you know, tortilla chips or something, anything, a piece of bread. I had a piece of like some bread up by my nightstand that I would munch on because that helps kind of fill your stomach up um, before you get up. Otherwise, oh, you're gonna just be, oh, it's horrible. It's awful. So yes, I even, I bought those, um, those ginger drops, but I can't say that they've helped at all. I know they have B6 in them and a lot of women say B6 help them. I'm just not sure. Maybe a B6 pill would be, you know, would work better. A B6 pill that had a higher dose in it instead of sucking on, um, the ginger B6 drops, the little lozenges. I can't say that they've helped me at all. Um, but sticking to bland food, having these things on my wrists and eating like small meals consistently throughout the day, like don't skip meals, don't overfill your body and you know, stick to the bland foods like crackers, some things that are appealing to you that aren't triggering any sort of like, oh, this doesn't taste good at all. Why am I eating this? And just gentle things. So I'm actually staying away from things like salads and raw vegetables and I'm staying away from some fruits. I'm sticking to things that I know my body can handle like bananas and cantaloupe and strawberries, but the other things that have higher fiber in them or that are a little bit more rough, I'm staying away from because my stomach gets irritated too a little bit and then I don't want to be stuck to the bathroom all day. So yeah, those are my symptoms. Those are my current symptoms. I feel very sick. I can't say I'm horribly tired. I just have a lack of motivation slightly. I think because of the nausea or because I don't know when I'm gonna, the hunger is gonna hit me and then I'm gonna feel like dizzy or sick to my stomach because I feel so hungry. Like I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. And um, yeah, so that's it. So if you're feeling sick, try these bands. They also have the like the mesh or the cotton ones, but um, these feel fine too. They're just plastic, but they're a soft plastic, so they, they don't feel stiff around you at all. And they have adjusters, so you can do it tighter or looser. Um, so yeah, and we just picked these up at Target. Um, but I think this has been my lifesaver because even when I take them off for a little bit, um, a couple hours later, I'll start to feel a little bit queasy again. I'll pop these suckers on and within a couple minutes, the edge is taken off and I can like breathe again. I'm not stuck in this nauseous hell. So yeah, I am almost nine weeks now and they say morning sickness lasts until about 12 weeks. So I'm hoping that this horrible week, I have never experienced morning sickness like this before. And I can't say it was absolutely horrible, but it's definitely been the worst personally that I've ever had because normally with my three boys, 
I wasn't very sick. I remember throwing up one time out of all three pregnancies and the other ones, I felt, I can't even tell you how I felt because it wasn't anything memorable. This one is one of those things where I know I'm gonna remember I'm gonna remember this forever and I'm gonna be like, heck to the no, number four, you're done. Tying the tubes up after this because I'm not doing that again. That's horrible. Fingers crossed this means it's a girl, but um, yeah, this is the worst I've ever had it throughout my pregnancies and it threw me for a loop a little bit. <clears throat> so, if you're experiencing morning sickness, good luck. If you think you're pregnant and you're experiencing some of the early symptoms, good luck. All right, guys. Bye.